Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to the Unconventional Homestead. Tonight, I'm going to start the rice for our stuffed pepper soup. I have a lot of peppers right now. As you know, I got some free from one of our farmers down at the farmer's market. So I have a lot that I freeze dried, but I still have some in my freezer. So I'm trying to make sure that I use those up, clear that space out. That's my goal right now is getting rid of everything, well, using everything in the freezer. So a lot of the choices I'm making as to what I'm cooking right now is based off of what I can get out of the freezer. So I have peppers, so we're gonna make a stuffed pepper soup. But what I like to do is try to get everything done the day before so that it's just dump and go. Try to make it as easy as possible. So I'm making the rice in my Instant Pot. I love it. You don't have to think at all. I keep my rice in a plastic container and what I've done is I have the recipe right here, so I don't have to go and look it up. It's two cups of liquid, two cups of rice, and a tablespoon of fat. It does say salt. I don't think I usually add the salt, um, and I won't this time, just in case. And for the liquid, I'm using my homemade beef broth. So, um, and you'll notice when I, um, I don't always put the year because I know this was done this year because I last year I used it all up. So uh, I do try to keep quite a bit of broth. Um, it's just easy. Anyway, so that's two cups. So I'm just going to get it in the Instapot. You cook it for 12 minutes. There's actually a rice function on the Instapot that you can press. Mine is right up at the top right hand. I I have had this Instapot for over seven years. And when I bought it, Anthony saw an infomercial and he said, you need that. And I'm like, oh no, no, no. At the time I didn't want any more gadgets. I mean, we had a nice, big, beautiful kitchen, floor to ceiling, cupboards, <clears throat> but I was like, no. And he pressured me and he pressured me. And it's probably the best decision we've made. We use it several times a week. I do hard boiled eggs in it every week. Um, when I make rice or something like that, I use it. I use it a lot for my pulled pork. So, um, and I have the stainless steel pot. It was a very expensive, okay, compared to now. But this is a six quart. Um, I do have a backup off brand one that somebody gave me because they know how much I love this. And I've actually had two going at the same time. I like my Insta Instapot better. Um, but it's nice to have a backup. It's nice to have two when I need it for chicken or pulled pork or something like that. Um, but it was $169, that's what I was gonna say. And seven years ago for us, that was a tight purchase for us to make, And but we did it. And to be real honest, I don't think either one of us regret that decision at all. We think it's probably one of the best purchases. We talk about it often because Anthony reminds me it was his idea and it was, and so was our freeze dryer. So to be real honest, Anthony's had two very good ideas that I've kind of been like, no, we don't need that. And come to find out they're two of our most favorite things. So I am going to add the beef broth. The fat I'm going to add is butter. And then I'm going to add, this is a two cup measuring cup. I love this. It is nice when I'm baking bread or just, um, I'm all about what's easiest. So there we go. And I'm going to give, I usually do a fork and just mix it. You don't have to worry about that uh, butter because it will take care of itself. You wanna make sure that you have your uh, on not venting and you just press the rice button. Can you see that? Yeah, it says 12. So I will bring you back when the rice is done, pull it off, show you what it is. What I do is I let it cool in the Instant Pot and then I put it in a Ziploc bag, label it, 
that it's one batch of rice um, because you can, in a six quart, do four cups of liquid and four cups of rice, which is nice when I make a large pot of this soup, that's what I do. So um, I'll see you just in a flash. The rice is done. So after the 12 minutes of uh, Instapot pressure, you want to do a natural release, usually at least 12 minutes. Mine's gone a little bit longer than that. So the lid comes off automatically. I'm gonna bring you down here now that the steam is gone. So I have that fork. And, ooh, hot. I like to fluff it up so that it's easier to package up later after it's definitely cooled down. It smells really good. I'm going to get the inner pot out and just leave it on the counter so that it can get lots of air and cool down even faster. It'll be ready for tomorrow when we put the soup together. Let's throw together our stuffed pepper soup. We have the tomato juice that was drained off of our tomatoes for our salsa or our pico de gallo. I have a two and a half pounds of beef, ground beef and ground pork that's already been browned that was in my freezer. So I took that out. We made the rice in the Instapot the other night. I have the peppers that are diced. We needed um, two pounds. And then I have all of the spices. I put the tomato paste in the pan already because when I was opening it, I don't know what happened to the can. So I just took it all out. It's in there. I put a little bacon grease because I do find that grease flavors everything just a little bit better. So let's start with the, uh, the tomato juice and we'll go from there. So remember this is four, a little over four quarts of juice. And I am going to add in then, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer so you can. In the pot, we're going to add three, no, a half a cup plus two tablespoons of dehydrated onion. We want to get that in there first to get it rehydrated and let it start um, really flavoring that tomato uh, juice. I have some tomato sauce, two cans of diced tomatoes, and I'm going to add a little bit of water to each of these cans. The recipe, um, I can be, you know, I can stretch it if we have to. I can always add a little bit more um, of the beef base. I just want to make sure we get everything out of these cans to get it into the soup. We want to get as much flavor out as we can. A fourth of a cup of sugar. A lot of times when you have a tomato-based soup, you do have sugar in it. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the spices. One and a quarter teaspoons of salt. We're gonna add two and a half tablespoons, probably the rest of this jar of the beef base. We wanna get that really warm so that it'll get melted and incorporate into all of that. I, I do have more so that if I feel after tasting it and need it, we can 
Wait till we get that. Okay, and then one tablespoon of onion. One and a quarter tablespoons of garlic. Pepper. Whoa. Wow. Jumping pepper. Teaspoon of basil and a half a teaspoon of oregano. You're going to see how quickly this can come together. This would be great for a work night meal. And then you can freeze it for lunches. Um, especially if you have the rice already made and the ground beef already cooked and the peppers diced. It really is just a dump and go soup that is so flavorful and a little different. Okay, so let's get the other stuff in here. I do have it on like a medium high heat. And it smells wonderful. Okay. I'm going to save the rice for last because it is cooked. So we don't, it doesn't need to be in there very long. That is the meat. peppers that we got at the farmer's market before our freeze dryer, so I freezed them. So remember, one of my goals is to get that, our freezers cleaned out. And that is kind of dictating what I'm deciding to make. This is just extra for our freezer for when our peeps need an extra meal. It's nice to have a few options. So during the winter, I try to make like, not every week, but probably three times a month, I'll make an extra soup. Not the full pot like I do, but usually a half pot. And um, then we'll have some extra for when someone's sick and that type of thing. I'll bring you back when, it bo when it's boiling because we want to bring it up to a boil turn it down and then we can cool it off and get it packaged up. Soup is starting to boil. So I'm going to put in our uh, rice. You wanna be careful when you're dropping this in, not so it splashes. Now this rice was fully cooked, but it will soak up some of the juices which is good. You want it to be known that there's rice in there. I am going to turn it down a little bit. I'm going to let it simmer for 10 more minutes and then I'll bring you back and we'll start packaging it up because I'm going to put it on a, put the containers on a cookie sheet and sit it out in our garage. It's cool enough tonight for a few hours to cool there. And then I'll put lids on it and put it in our refrigerator and I'll cool it completely before I put it in the freezer um, so that there's not condensation and um, no issues. The soup came back up to a boil after I put the rice in, so I let it, I, I turned it off and stirred it for like five more minutes to simmer and I'm gonna package it up. I don't want it to uh, stick to the bottom. To just, to, uh, 
put your soup in its containers, you want to make sure you get your ladle stirring around, get all the way on the bottom and get some of those chunks. You want to make sure that you get all of that goodness in every single ladle. So you do two to three ladles for a big container. This is probably a quart and a half container. Um, two to three ladles full of all of the uh, ingredients. And then you wanna do two of just the broth. That was three. And then I'm gonna do one more mix. Now, when you're freezing these, you do wanna give it at least an inch to an inch and a half of headspace. You don't want it to expand too much. I'll show you. Um, and then I always have a wet paper towel where I can wipe it off and then I put it onto a cookie sheet, which just makes it a lot easier. This is a quart container. But this is nice because you can see the rice and the ground beef and the few chunks of tomato that are in there and the peppers, the green peppers just really show off. You can know what this is just by looking at it. Then again, remember you want just a little bit of the broth on the top, but leave an inch of headspace on your containers for when you're freezing them. I'll come back after I get everything in the containers and let you know how much soup this made. 13 servings of soup. We have four of the doubles and five singles. So what a wonderful night of soup making with just some stuff that I had in my freezer. So I met a few goals, filled up, have some extra meals, um, these three are being delivered this week. That's why they don't have the headspace. These will all, these six will all go in the freezer for another week. I've labeled all of the lids already um, so that I know what they are and people know just to reheat. So I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Please like, share, comment, and of course subscribe. We hope that you'll come back to the unconventional homestead. I'm Jenny, and until we see you again, please make sure you're preserving your food.